Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Astrological Intentions. Coming to you from Cincinnati, Ohio, I am Alex Reevy, along with the Cincy scenester herself, <laughs> Sandy Reevy. Say hi. I guess that's me. It is episode 140, March 29th. Let's get right into it. In the transits, we have today, Mercury conjunct Neptune. Steeped in thought. Tuesday, March 30th, Venus sextile Saturn. Gears begin to move. Wednesday, March 31st, Sun sextile Saturn. To be known. Friday, April 2nd, Mercury sextile Pluto. You now have a clue. Saturday, April 3rd, Mercury ingress Aries. Finally, making sense. And Sunday, April 4th, Happy Easter. Then in talisman times, we are going to briefly discuss a few of our favorite talismans. On the horizon, we have our seven-day intention challenge, our Mother's Day pop-up, as well as our summer solstice constellation bracelet workshop you won't want to miss. And in our house, Sandy and I are going to recap our last weekend, which was filled with bridal shower events, reunions with family, and a few creative games that we've created. So listen in and hear all the stories. Stay tuned for this episode of Astrological Intentions. In the search ends here Where the night is totally clear And your heart is fierce And so you finally know You control where you go Hello, Cincy Scenester. <laughs> well, it is my hometown, Cincinnati. It which is, is, you know... The abbreviated is Cincy. Right. So I wanted to wanted to give you your your name because how suiting. We we just got done with a bunch of events, lots of bridal showers, getting ready for the wedding, and you seem like the scene stir right now. You're popping over, you're reunion reunioning with family that you haven't seen in eighteen years. Right. The in laws, yeah. Yes. Um, and and let's just clarify it's my son's wedding. Yes, <laughs> not your wedding, <laughs> son's wedding. So uh, my brother's some wedding, don't, right? Your brother's wedding, and some people don't even know that you know I have a son because they all they know so much about you. They do. All and, of our listeners do yeah, at least. And so he's getting married. Uh, you know, the delayed date has now spun into the May first. Right. So so we're going to talk all about that in our house. But I wanted to first go direct to you all. And say a big thank you for everyone who's sent in those Google reviews and podcast reviews and all of the love and support you send in those emails. We did get an email from Laura. She says, I'm thrilled to support women-owned small businesses like yours, especially a business of a spiritual nature that helps so many. Stay well and have a wonderful evening. Warm hugs and blessings. Laura. Oh, Laura, that warms my heart. It's It really is about giving your warmth to others, right? Your light, your shine to others without mm -hmm. taking away your own, right? When you give a little bit, you know, it's, what is, what is that called? You know, um, um, tether, um, oh, I can't remember the word now all of a sudden. You know, where you, where you gift what you have, what you have maybe have an abundance of, and you gift it to others without taking anything away from yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and and you see the light in the p other people that are surrounding you that you've given to because, you know, it's it's their light shines. You help them, their light shine. And, and thanks, Laura, for for bringing that to to your light to me yes. and to us. Yeah. Thank you. And, of course, if anyone out there has any feedback and any comments, email me, alex at intentionbeads.com. So let's get into the transits. This week we have, we're going to be ending with Easter on Sunday. Let's start with today, Monday, March 29th, Mercury conjunct Neptune. This is at 21 degrees of Pisces. And, you know, every time, you know, every year when Mercury comes around and hits that conjunction meets up exactly at that same degree that Neptune is at. Neptune is moved a little bit further on in the sign of Pisces. And so now this Neptune is in this, what's considered the third decan, the third portion of, of Pisces. We're at 21 degrees there. And this is at 1024 PM, you know, steeped in thought, really Mercury is the planet of thought is the, the, you know, Mercury wants the communication, the detail, the precise ideation, expressing that out. Well, if it's meeting up with Neptune, the modern ruler of Pisces, then we already know that Mercury's still in Pisces, 
where Mercury's in his fall and his detriment. So it doesn't mean I have this in my natal chart, that at least the Mercury in Pisces. So mm-hmm. it doesn't mean you can't think. <laughs> it doesn't mean you're falling on you your face. You think in a different way. You think slightly more attuning into a feeling, into a sense. And there's, you know, kind of this word called, you know, common sense ability, right? Mm-hmm. And then there's this like spiritual sensibility where, you know, common sense means that plus that equals that. So if, if you turn right at the light, you're going to go in that direction. Right. That makes as a common sense. But when you're in, in Pisces, meeting up with the modern ruler of Pisces, Mercury has to be steeped in the thought of that spiritual connection, you know, where it doesn't have a whole lot of energy. It's not doing a lot, but it's feeling a lot. And so, you know, things get blurred. And, you know, make sure you're being honest. You know, we're here, you know, right around this you know, maybe going to your accountant and going and Mm -hmm. filling out your tax time. I know we got a little a month extension, but, you know, making sure that, you know, you're keeping in the lines of honesty and truth, but yet you can, um, you know, on the, on the side of maybe creative writing or your poetry or your art in some fashion, how you express yourself has to be creative. Now, yeah, there's, there's, if you're in a creative field at work, like we are, we can, we get to expand that. So writing about the sweetness of doing nothing, it has been a word for me that's been very, um, the dolce. Vignette. Right? Dolce vignette. In Italian, it means like the sweetness of doing nothing or like those like idle hands, you know, where we don't have to be doing anything and we can just be in that observer space and appreciate and give gratitude right because i like that sweetness of doing nothing doesn't mean you know we're a blob laying on the couch doing doesn't nothing. mean we're lazy right right it doesn't mean lazy it means that on purpose with intention mm-hmm. we are in this space and you know if this is an emotional period right mercury gets into the feelings has to sense its way around as if you closed your eyes and you had to remember what did you put on the floor in front of you what you have to, you, you, you take a little bit slower to maneuver around Mm. um, the space that you're in. So this is not a time with a full lot of energy. So spiritually sense yourself around today. Okay. Things may not be real common in their sensing. And so Tuesday, March 30th, Venus sextile Saturn. Tell us about this. Gears begin to move. This is Mer- this is Venus. Venus is in the sign. You know, Venus likes to connect. Venus likes to communi- uh, at least make connections, uh, right? It's the ruler of of copper. And in its sextile, sextile takes the opportunity, take the initiative of Saturn. So these, these two are happy planets saying hello to one another. And, you know, the Venus is making the first move because it's an Aries. It's in that cardinal sign. So connections are made and deals are struck all works well so things are starting to and be a little bit more committed Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. showing that commitment with with that venus and aries going for the passions and what we want and you know finding value in those things and so wednesday march 31st sun sextiles saturn to be known to be known the sun is now and and that makes sense because venus if it was venus the day before and then the next day the sun comes in because me- Venus is moving faster than the sun right now, that the sun is now making its sextile to Saturn. And it's like whatever you're doing, y- you will be remembered for. Mm. It's kind of like making a, like a, like establishing something. And so connections are, um, you know, the state, stake your feet, stake your territory. You know, one of my favorite Ben Dykes talks about staking the areas in your life. You know, it's kind of like, putting up your territory here's my boundaries here's the stakes that hold my property my my world together Hmm. so stake your territory and plot your space and be proud yeah I like that and stand up stand up and be and what I like about that too is like really take care of the things that you take ownership over and appreciate those because I think a lot of the time we are overwhelmed with all of the things that we have to do, but yeah. sometimes we really need to focus in those areas and really stake that territory and say, you know what, I am a great, you always say this, I'm great at logistics and you've <laughs> staked that territory. Um, 
yeah, I, and I think for me, it's I stake territory in a lot of technology and a lot of like learning atmosphere, meditation atmosphere. So let's move on. Friday, April 2nd, Mercury sextile Pluto. Yeah, this is, I called this t- that you now have a clue. We're in the, we're now in April. Mm-hmm. And so happy April. This starts at 104 in the morning. And this is an information. Um, any information a day gives a sense of power and certainty. So it's like, oh, you know, I, I get this. I'm beginning to understand. I've been in this space of this Mercury Pisces floating around, going this way, mutable. I can do this or I can do that, right? And now it meets up with Pluto, the big, heavy planet, Mm -hmm. that little, tiny, what's considered a dwarf planet Like the atomic bomb, yeah. Um, But it is nuclear in power. And so it's this urge to teach others this discovery that you have kind of found and watch trying to be too persuasive because you will want to, you know, really sell somebody on something because you, your way is the way you found the route. Mm-hmm. Right. And you want to make sure that you're using the intuition uh, when you're listening to somebody or when you're trying to be that persuasive communicator, you know, people will come on board when they intuitively feel it. So allow that to happen. Don't force it to happen, even though this position may want you a little bit forceful. Forceful. Mm. And I always like that in a leader, having that more like magnetic leadership rather than that forceful leadership, because I don't think many people respond well <laughs> to that, you know, control. So Saturday, April 3rd, Mercury ingresses Aries. Zero Aries, right? It crosses this Aries point. And Mercury, and this is at 10.41 p.m., just as we're, well, I'll probably be long asleep. <laughs> but just as people are getting ready to go to bed, it, you know, things are starting, finally making sense. Okay. And Mercury moving out of detriment and fall and into the fiery cardinal, which is called a movable sign. This is a movable sign. You can now start treading uh, planting, you know, tire marks onto the onto the ground, onto mm-hmm. the road. So you're quick to make decisions. Um, you're getting out, getting about. Uh, some business. You want to get into business of any kind. It's making connections. It's moving super fast now. So you know, it only stays here for 16 days in Aries. Oh, that is short. Yeah. So it's moving. It's typically about a 21 day period, but really clipping along. Um, yeah, because it's out. That's exactly what Aries wants. Right? It's like, put <laughs> put your thinking. Hurry up. Well, you know, you've heard people say, put your thinking cap on. But in this case, it's like, put your thinking sports cap on. Mm-hmm. Because it wants to move quickly, like an athlete, like an entrepreneur, without fear. It's going to be saying something. So if we think about that, after it's moved from this feely place of Pisces, water, mutable, and boom, on this day, plants and dries off and is ready to, you know, get in the sports car or get in his gym shoes and start moving. Be careful. You know, do you know what direction you're going? Mm -hmm. You know, it's good if you know what direction you're going. But if you've been willy nilly for the last, you know, two weeks, two and a half weeks. Right. With Mercury and Pisces. Yeah. You may be doubtful of what, what way to go or what, what, what's your, where, where your gas is full and where you need to start pointing your steer your ship if you will and would this be like more like mercury when mercury is ingress in aries is that more of like a gut feeling no it's more more of thought new, yeah, well it's more of a like i just gotta go okay i gotta just say something mm-hmm. so be careful on what you're what what's coming out of your mouth what's what what you think that you have to express right away mm. and, and actually you may even if you're listening to this in time that that monday and tuesday um you know, we're, we're getting the lead up. It's like Monday and actually Friday uh, when that Mercury hit hits that n- Neptune where you're thinking, you know, you're in that intuitive feel. Like, what is it you want to do? We got then the two big planets of Venus and the sun hit that Saturn where it says, OK, this is this is how I want to move forward. This is what I feel like as Venus is preparing to move out of the combustion with the sun. It's not for another 10 days, two weeks. But how do we want to be seen, right? What? How do we want to make our mark in the world? Mercury then meets up with Pluto, you know, on Friday and says, you have an idea here. 
what what is it that there's a clue here and then boom saturday says do it do it mm. so use this whole week with that thought of on saturday the third april 3rd what are you moving what are you moving towards okay and Sunday, April 4th is Happy Easter, everybody. It's Easter time, and that's a big celebratory day for some, you know, Lent's over, the Lentil season is over. Um, which lentil, I had, I had given up yeah. coffee, which is has been a huge blessing. And anyone with, you know, Raynaud's or poor circulation knows that caffeine is not your friend. Mm. And so for me, it's it's been a huge blessing. You know, my fingers are, I can feel them. It's a wonderful thought. <laughs> yeah, and it's also warming up too. But it is. You've always complained about, mm-hmm. you know, you. Oh, sure, I'll have a cup of coffee, and then hours. I later, regret you're it. Like, Damn, I had a cup of coffee. <laughs> and so talisman times are going to seem a little bit different this week because since we are traveling, you are going to be making a talisman while we're out of town. And mm-hmm. let's just go over this one. We have many more that Sandy has finished and are up on the website. So check those out always at intentionbeads.com. You can also see the pre-sale talismans. And pre-sale basically means that they are we are posting them up on the website before they are going to be made so that you can I, you can purchase them beforehand and be a part mm-hmm. of the creation process, which means you get to add you know, guidance with style and you get to be present in your own meditation, in your own sacred space while this talisman is being made. So because I, I contact you. Right, right. I find out what, what your two favorite colors are, if you want a small bead or large bead, and also give you the, the exact time and then we change it to your time zone so that you're and we do a countdown on text. And actually two of the ones that we announced last week uh, pre sold. Right. So they were in the meditation, uh, gave them what to say. Um, it's a great option. Ugh. It's such a great option. There's if no, you can catch no more it. money, no more cost to them to be involved in it. Right. It's, it's and it's such a blessing to be mm-hmm. to be there and to be present in it all. Mm-hmm. So the one that you are going to be finishing up that you have just finished it up earlier this morning, very early Monday, March 29th to pave the way for others. I am awarded a grant in order to build my platform. My goal creates the pathway for all civilized humans to prosper through law and justice. I lead. Now, this is, this doesn't happen very often. This is, I'll, I won't be able to get this for 12 years. The, son, the planet Jupiter is moving at almost 23 degrees of Aquarius, mm-hmm. which is where the fixed star Deneb al sits in the sky and this is a fixed star and this is the star that that talks about law giving law law giving you know putting some order together um you know and we know that jupiter rules finances and wealth and abundance and growth so this is a really for the this jupiter to be on the ascendant coming up at this exact moment sitting on this exact star is very propitious um propitious i like that word mm. Yeah, Bonus and then points. we got the moon in Libra making a really nice uh, applying sextile to Jupiter in the Ascendant and the fixed star Deneb al So this is a really, to pave the way for others, right? It's like you're moving through the brush, you're moving through the woods, the forest, through what's fair and justice for all, for, for, the, human, for the humans to follow mm. on that path. So you're, and, and it's about, you know, because it's the Jupiter there and we, we pulled in the wealth or the financial portion of Jupiter about you're awarded some sort of money. I called it a grant because it just sounds, I like the word grant, you know, I like the word grant, then maybe a paycheck. <laughs> right. And I also think, you know, what I like about this one is paving the way for others means that you really have to be this trailblazer. Mm-hmm. You really have to be, you know having this creative thought of helping others or really doing a great service that will start something new that other people will say, wow, so that that was possible for them. That's possible for me and that they can they can really grow and expand in those ways even greater than that path that you had blazed before. Mm -hmm. And that there's other people here. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing it by myself. And having like a lineage, Mm -hmm. having that legacy. Mm hmm. Um, so the upcoming talismans, like I said before, we're going to keep this talisman time segment short. So 
we're going to be announcing those on the website this week. Head over to intentionbeads.com underneath uh, talismans. You'll see pre-sale talismans, and that's where you'll see all of those. Also, we have the orbit of the month. This is a new month, April, and the new orbit of the month is this is exciting. And tell me a little bit why you chose the this well, is exciting. It's Aries period, yes. right? It's it's We're coming out of the Pisces period that this you know sun's prepping to move in to aries this month mercury moves in advance and it just is about taking action and let's get going and we certainly when it was here a year ago uh, as you know spring comes it's like let's go let's get out in the yard let's start traveling let's get rid of our coats and our boots and Mm -hmm. put on our flip-flops and get in the sand and it was like no you can't uh uh-uh, uh, stop. <laughs> so this year, above all, it's like, let's make make something in your life exciting. Be excited about something, right? Um, you know, to to get out and to do something independently, uh, feeling a little bit of freedom and in and, um, and movement. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like that, mm-hmm. I, and I'm feeling it already. I mean, just with the uptick in sunlight in this new Mm -hmm. springtime the the blooms are popping up out of the ground and I mean to me every spring that's like really a miracle that you know through that death of that really cold winter and everything retreating and going internal to be able to expand through the topsoil Mm -hmm. so cool such a so exhilarating too I mean when we think about it it's like when we really truly think about, you know, plants and how they grow, it's, it's amazing. Right. It's how, amazing. How do they stay? How do they know this? <laughs> <laughs> how, where do they get this passion and this drive? And, you know, because it is so natural that, that it happens every single year. We can count on it. So I love that. It's just I love what that. they do. Mm-hmm. We it's a beautiful that. interworking. It's just what we do. Yes. So let's move on to the horizon. Yes, I'm excited for the things that are coming up. We don't have like a big, big amount, but let's start with April 10th through the 16th. This is our seven day intention challenge. And this is invite only. We've been talking about it for a while and it's It's a free event. It's, It's our second event. It's a free event. All you need to do is make sure that you have a talisman. And mm-hmm. this is one of the personals. This is one of the universal bracelets. And um, if you are curious and you want to email me just to confirm your invite, go ahead, alex at intentionbeads.com. So also in May, we have Mother's Day coming up. Mm-hmm. And we are hosting with She Beads at the OG company, the original company. Oh, is that what, what OG means? <laughs> Not really. It's oh. like <laughs> original gangster, but oh. <laughs> OG, original. <laughs> Um, mo- the Mother's Day pop-up is happening with She Beads. So if you do want to get on the mailing list, that is how you're going to know what's when it's happening and all of the collections that we are we have been preparing. And I have to just honor you here for a minute, Alex. You know, going to school and graduating cum laude in your marketing Loyola, right? Mm-hmm. The integrity that you got from... The, your, your schooling and graduation and uh, understanding all that is to run a company right through the marketing technology was one of the things right mm-hmm. and the fact that we had a company called she beads that's my that was the big company that i you know 26 years in operation with the michael jordan story and you know how i started making beads that weren't astrologically um connected mm-hmm. that when we started intention beads 11 years ago you had the cognizance and uh, t- integrity of having two separate email lists. And of course, you know, I'm like, well, who just uh, email list is an email. Let's just keep adding to it. You're like, no, these people said yes, they wanted she beads information. And these people said they wanted intention bead information. Oh, and I still keep that. So anyone who is hold signing that up and mm-hmm. honor it. So what we're saying here, if you're an intention bead, you know, you're, li- you're Subscriber. obviously listening to us here all you need to do is update your preferences once you update those preferences you're going to see that you have an option of do you want just the astrology talismans those intention beads or do you want to also or either or 
l- learn more about what's going on with she beads and whenever we pop those Mother's Day collections, the holiday time, and so on. So let's move on. May 11th, we also have the start of our Summer Solstice Constellation Bracelet and Workshop. So many of our attendees in this past season have loved this bracelet and w- workshop that they're staying on. So we only have a very limited very amount of seats. So make sure to get on and get grab it as soon as possible. The link is in the description. So that is all for On the Horizon. We do have um, some more updates that we'll be providing. Let's quick talk about the um, Constellation Workshop. Um, uh, not the constellation the chatting with the stars webinar oh, on right, right, april right. 14th oh my gosh i can't believe i missed that so yes april 14th we have the out of bounds planets mm-hmm. this is new to the website so it is on the website now and this is all about like the planets going rogue <laughs> this is about you know like how do you like how are you extreme in your world and in your life and what makes you want to jump off the plane and go rogue <laughs> or f- figuratively speaking and literally speaking go, so, go off the bounds go off of the territory that says you're supposed to stay within these these this marking and you want to go off the marking so do you have any planets out of bounds You know, what do they mean? How do they act? I mean, currently right now we have Mars out of bounds. So things are taking a little bit more of an extra push. Things want to go a little bit further than we would normally. And I know a good friend of mine, one of my best friends, he always says that anything worth doing is worth overdoing. Mm -hmm. And yep, Mars out of bounds. Yes. So that, and, and it's a $25 you know, this is with Susan Goodell and I, and we've prepped all these beautiful charts and sample examples to show you um, famous people and who has some out of bounds planets and what it means and how often it how often it happens and which planets are more are more um, prone prone to go retro, uh, out of bounds versus those that rarely do. And then for that extra $5, I'll do your chart and see, do you have any planets out of bounds? Which ones are they? So you, you know, going into the, our class, our webinar on April 14th at 5.30 p.m. That's Chicago Central Time. That's our live. Um, and you don't have to be there uh, in person or on Zoom to, to, it's recorded, so you'll get catch it later. So you'll get a lot of information about out of bounds planets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm really excited. And of course, if you have any questions about these events or if there's anything that you want clarification on, go ahead and email me, alex at intentionbeads.com. I'm so excited to get into our house so that we can start talking about our event filled Cincy Scenesters <laughs> <laughs> stories, <laughs> story time. And so, yeah, I just want to recap this this past weekend because your son, my brother, is getting married in May and we were hosting some bridal shower events. Mm. And it honestly, when, you know, you have a divorced family, it, weddings can be a little bit tricky. And this is the first one. Right. This is the first one of our family. And, um, you know, the bridal shower we needed to split them up so the two families you know weren't going to be you know coming together however you were invited to both so you were going to of course your own families but also your ex ex husband my dad's mm-hmm. family the father of my children yes <laughs> and his side of the family which he's one of 12 children and it's been 18 years yeah and so talk a little bit about that um if i can get through that without crying um, very excited. I, I mean, I, I've not seen, I've seen a couple of them when I come to visit Cincinnati. I might see them at church or at a restaurant when I'm with my mom. But knew some were coming didn't know, and didn't know some of the cousins. Didn't Never met them. They're under 18 years old, so would never have uh, seen them. And some of the ones that are 22 years old were only four when I when I kind of mm-hmm. departed the, the scene. And, oh, my gosh, his mom was sitting there as soon as I walked in. And I 
literally, I don't know who took the flower arrangement for, out of my hand, but it was a blur and I just ran, I threw my purse, somebody had to grab my purse and my little jacket and I ran up to her, she was sitting in a chair, of course she's like 93, uh, with it, beautiful, gorgeous, lilac pantsuit, just stunning and uh, we put heads together and started crying and hugging and we were so happy to see each other and we really did we stayed connected the entire four hours five hours of the shower and, and you know what love the fact that I'm getting a daughter-in-law I would hope the minute I had a baby boy that I was like one day I'm gonna get a daughter-in-law and this is and it's here you know Andrew's 37 years old right and you know Rachel's coming into the family and I'm so thrilled and Rachel meeting the whole other side of the family the Reeves family but I have to say it was mostly about me. Well, when you walked through, it was kind of like this uproar that these sisters-in-law that you have known ever oh since God. you were, what, 30 four, years we were together. 16, 30, 16, 18 30 years, years old? Um, 30 years yeah. you've known these sisters-in-laws, and it's like, you know, a, a homecoming mm -hmm. of some sort. You know, it is, it's really exciting when you are inviting, you know, a stranger into the company, or into the company, into the family, but when you're reunioning mm -hmm. with somebody that you haven't seen in 18 years you mm -hmm. have the history you have that excitement oh you have the nervousness at the same time I was so. completely confident in the fact that you know I was going to be accepted and welcomed and I didn't I wasn't worried about any of that that's great and every single one of them couldn't couldn't get it I mean I couldn't get enough of them they couldn't get enough Aww. of me it literally it was so proud when we got when we left it was just like oh my gosh thank god that this happened we, we were able to re reconnect and reconcile and never no never ever ever never hard feelings between you know myself and them ever. right right um but it, it was there was no communication mm -hmm. though after yeah, you know the separation of of the rules and regulations i guess that i was following but um <laughs> the fact that and you were we were, we're, we're driving home, we're driving to the next shower. It was at my mom's house, um, and we're driving to the shower. And you said, and which almost which also made me cry. I cried. I carried a tissue the entire time <laughs> of the four hours of the good. of the event. But you said something to me, Alex, that was like a wow factor, and it was like, you know, my cousins. They've obviously because you guys get together a lot, and there are there's twelve kids. So she right. has 37 grandchildren and she doesn't, she says, I don't know how many great grandchildren I have. So I don't know if there's 20, I don't know if there's 30. What? Great grandchildren? Great grandchildren. Yeah, 36. So yeah. it's, it's a big, 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 big family. So with the fact that you were able to say they know who my dad is. And they know who I am. I am their family. But it's so crazy that none of my, majority of my cousins and great, you know, or second cousins now they don't know who my mom is and I am the only one in the family who they don't know who my mom is yeah because I'm the only we're the only divorced right couple in the so family crazy and it was just like wow Alex I never saw your your view on that that hey I have a mom she you just don't know her right um you know like where is she, like where is she is she I don't know she like did she pass away is she, is she yeah. in prison is she incarcerated is she live around the, she, she in hand, like she come out of the house is she in a coma like where right. where is she that you know boom we walk in it's like that's your mom oh and oh my they, God, she's funny yeah she's, she's funny <laughs> she's vivacious she's you know like and she she gets along with everyone it wasn't like there wasn't a problem of like the mother you know, it was yeah. it wasn't her problem. Like the problem was between the marriage, and that's yeah. and that's okay. And sometimes yeah. that doesn't ha it yeah. doesn't work out. Mm -hmm. But it was it's just like you know, because and I would probably venture to guess that they've not really thought about this on end, and <laughs> you know, like it's not keeping them awake at night. But you know, it was kind of nice for me to be able to introduce you mm -hmm. to like a lot of my you know, family members. How mm -hmm. weird is that? Mm -hmm. So anyway, I wanted to, you know, spend a little bit of time there with that reunion because that was, you know, it, wow. it was nerve wracking. It was exciting. It was, it was just, I mean, I think anyone would just be like, okay, well, what is this going to look like? Is this going to, is anyone going to buy gonna... a dress? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted, I wanted you to, to level up and be, get 
get into the mother of the groom role Mm -hmm. because I think that that's such a cool and important space Mm -hmm. to be in of Mm -hmm. like hey look at me and look look how I've raised my son and look look at look at what I've done and Mm -hmm. who I am and and come up to me and talk to me you know I'm not going to need to come up and talk to all Mm -hmm. you know so it was kind of this this um this great respect that I was excited for you to be back in that scene you know yeah so yeah and nobody changed it was so great. It was so yeah. great. And um, yeah, that totally warmed my heart. So let's also talk about, so this weekend has been crazy, especially for the the future bride-to-be. And she, her family's from St. Louis, so she Rachel drove, Lee. she yes. came all the way from St. Louis to Cincinnati. From Naples, to, Florida. <laughs> right. Fr- flew from Naples, Florida to Sa- St. Louis, drove to Cincinnati, had two bridal showers back to back in the same day. That same day, they leave to go back to St. Louis, get home at 2 a.m. She's got to go, hurry, go to get to sleep, wake up, and she's got a third bridal shower. With 50 people. Today. With 50 people. Yeah. So, and it's the like the mega of the of the bridal showers so it was great we had um we didn't have any games over at you know my dad's side of the family but it was just really great company and wonderful food and then we came over and you and i were in charge of the games which Mm -hmm. you know we always are we always are and it is is. it like it's our we staked our territory there (laughs) i mean really hard um so we love to get creative with our games and you know, I like to take your ideas and, you know, run with them mm, and you did and get great job. creative and, and really like expand. So we started out, she, you know, she's so competitive and I love that about her. She's mm-hmm. so hardworking. She's so competitive and, and she's always like ready for like the game to, to, to get, to win. she wants to win. And like, honestly, she's like one person I would like w- pick on my team because I want someone who like wants to win. No, like, like, like will win (laughs) right damn right (laughs) so um we wanted to create a game for her and we started throwing around some ideas you and i and and we're not the pinterest type we don't go on pinterest we or like we don't we don't go and like start trying to figure out other people's ideas Uh -uh. we go okay what does she love she okay she loves she does love shopping she loves to be as like price conscious as possible and resourceful so we were like, oh my gosh, you, you wanted to like create a game where she needed to guess the prices, prices. of things. We're like, we start s- snowballing right. more. The price is right. And so I then- said, let's, let's do the prices right, Alex. We'll get four things. We'll go shopping. We'll put the things up. She has to guess up or down. What's the first, what's the cheapest, the second cheapest, the third cheapest, right. and the most expensive. Brilliant idea. You, Wonderful you come, idea. And you come I come, with- I, a few days later, I had just like, you know, I didn't. Even, I wasn't even thinking about it, but all of a sudden, in my head, it goes, "the the price isn't right. The bride is right. <laughs> Brilliancy just came illuminating through." And I switched up the logo of the Price Is Right. I I figured out like I I got all of the sound effects from the oh game, the the theme song, the the wrong song, the wah, wah, and then the where you get it right and it's like ding 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 like you just like won from one of the penny slots. It is it was so much fun. And so it's called it's called the, the bride. bride is right, and it's so brilliant. I, <laughs> Which is true. I'm going to include be. the logo that I recreated on in the description. So oh, if yeah. you scroll down, you'll be able to see a, it. There's a engaged diamond ring. I added from... instead of the price, I, I I created the bride. We we changed up the colors a bit because we wanted you know to use her colors for the pre-COVID mm-hmm. wedding date that they had, which was going to be green and some blues, and. And yeah, it, it just snowballed into this really wonderful place. Um, and if we, you, we wrapped boxes, so we had a st- we made a stage. We had 
those frame holders we put each I item had I in had a frame I was I was producing mm-hmm. while also like co-hosting with you we did a virtual, we, we did a virtual shower as well so we had like person. people in the audience our, aka like you our know family. our our family and then we also had our family online from from, from zoom on different parts so I had a, a camera angle shooting Mm -hmm. at Rachel taking her guesses I had a camera angle watching the audience Mm -hmm. because you know when they like pick a name and they're like Rachel come on down Mm -hmm. and then you're just like cheering Mm -hmm. and everyone's Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. and then when people are you know guessing the numbers they're like I'm gonna guess like 1099 and everyone's like no no higher higher (laughs) so it was really engaging it was so much fun and you even had the double I had taped double sided tape so that we could pull off to reveal the actual prices. It was pristine. I really think I should be like, I should have been a blogger of some sort when it comes to bridal shower games because it is so much fun to do. Do you put that amount of effort effort into our our retreats, our events, our. It just everything it, we do. Right. Yeah. It's so true. And and we love it. We just we're, so Oh my gosh, wouldn't it be cool? Cuz majority of our ideas fall, you know, and we're like, "Oh, wouldn't it be cool if all of a sudden she's sitting on her head and, you know, yeah. doing a car and it's like, "Oh, no, that's not going to work." <laughs> so, um so anyway, it's just it's just been such a great weekend full of family fun. And then you had another game Oh, and then we had another game soon called to be newlywed the game. soon to be newlywed game, which um, you made paddles. I made these little paddles on the front. It had my brother's name, Andrew, on the back, his future bride to be um, Rachel. And so she, since the bride is right, <laughs> she got to um, when we asked these questions, we would ask questions like who's most likely to go swimming with the sharks, who is uh, the better cook. Who, who would is, take care of a spider? Who, yeah, who's <laughs> most likely to take care of the spider, which is hysterical. And I, unanimously, the entire family said it was going to be Rachel. And it was right. And it, it was totally right because <laughs> my brother has like some weird fear over those like creepy crawly things. <laughs> and um, yeah, it was just, it oh, was, was great fun. because the family got to really be engaged here. Like they were, you know, and they had to be competitive because, it, you know, the winner was going to win a prize. And it was a great... And the people online, they, they sent we sent them? We sent them the paddles. Oh so gosh. people on, you know, virtually were able to participate. Um, it was it was so much fun. I, I couldn't have and pictured it of, to be better. All of our little series that we had, we had four things. And we had we different went, categories. We had cleaning supplies. We had self-care. We had snacks. We had candy. We had medicine. We also, I, I figured yeah. out some average costs of wedding you know things like the bride's hair and makeup yeah. we had the officiant we had the invitations, invitations the, cake. the ceremony music so it was just really interesting and and all of the other brides that had you know just recently gotten married oh i know this i know this yeah. so they were helping out and um it was it was great i like could you have imagined no. it any better it was great it was so. great and then she got to keep all those gifts those oh, were, yeah. those were our shower gifts cuz those are things that you're going to need in your house, you know, when you get when you get Oh, and house. a little okay, we'll we'll add a little oh, bonus a little, to this. This little secret part. At the last category, she's, you know, picking out, you know, what's what's more expensive, the pearl hangers that we bought, the Mr. soy candle, yeah. Mr. and Mrs. coffee cups, Mr. and Mrs. coffee mugs, the and then there was a little wallet. And if you listeners have been listening to us since, I don't know, maybe a year Two ago. 2 years ago. We created another bridal shower game, of course, for one of my cousins, and it was all mapped around the fact that my grandma still, to this day, and every day before this, since her honeymoon, has carried- 70 years ago. 70 <laughs> years ago, has a small little like business si- business card size photo of my grandpa in a lounge chair in this like kind of, it's not a Speedo, but it's c- kind of like a boxer brief type of- s- That they wore back in the swim 1950s. Trunks. Yes. And so- uh, and a, a, An amazing body. I yeah. Just no, like strong buff guy <laughs> and she- at, this is her evidence of why she married <laughs> my poppy, my my grandpa. And so she'll, and honestly, she'll pull it out at the grocery store. She'll pull it out at the bar. She'll pull it out Not at the restaurant. Bar, well, yeah. or the the ch- yeah. where she likes to go with friends. 
Um, and it's just so much fun. It, it like, And so what we wanted to do is recreate that and have a tradition. So last wedding, we had the soon to be groom. I had him pose in some, you know, a little type of speedo type bathing mm-hmm. suit. And I photoshopped it to look old and wrinkly. Well, not the his picture. skin, the picture, <laughs> not him. And where I had him pose just like the photo of Love Poppy. Yeah. And we had it on a really big canvas and we had puzzle pieces. So it was all blurry at first. So it was very pixelated and, and every question that she got right, she was able to put another puzzle piece up on this board. Mm-hmm. And by the end, it like you have to squint, you have to walk away from it to realize like, what is this? What mm-hmm. picture is this? And we handed her the wallet and in the wallet was a <laughs> hunk, a hunk like picture of her future husband. Mm-hmm. And it was, everyone was out like, roaring laughing and just so funny so of course we have to you know keep the tradition so this year we um we totally photoshopped my brother uh (laughs) into the same scene and hysterical even when we showed it to my brother he goes oh yeah that's the the picture of poppy and i go no look a little bit closer he goes no way that's my face (laughs) so we we did that and, and it we was put it in a wall and, and we put it in a wallet wall, and it was one of the f- number five things on the very last series and she was trying to guess this wallet cost is that more than the candle is that more than the pearl handle hangers and when she when we unveiled it it said priceless, priceless open, open now. now and, and so she's like she doesn't really know the, the whole story so she opens it and I, I i'm wondering if she was looking for like a hundred dollar bill or some sort of money <laughs> who knows so she opens it and it's a picture like this picture that we're just talking about and um was like oh my gosh and then caitlin runs out in her purse and gets her purse and gets out the wallet that we gave her right a year and a half ago so oh my god it was just it it's it it was the ultimate uh bridal shower gift right anyway Whew, success done yeah yeah Honestly, I I would do it all over again. It was such such a success, such a wonderful space to be in. And we got one more day here and then we're going to head back home and get back to work. So thank you, everybody, for Mm -hmm. listening to our podcast. Mm -hmm. You know, we love you. you. So share your love back with us. Of course, give us a review, some feedback. We love the five star reviews, of course. So um, we will see you next week. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Bye, everybody. And the search ends here Where the night is told